so lone rider here and um a bit of an interesting uh series of events that happened these last few days uh, i had several run-ins with careless drivers uh, in particular uh people on the cell phone people who weren't using turn signals people who were swerving all over the place like they were drunk off the keister and one of the things that i've been thinking about being a cyclist as well as a driver and a pedestrian is um, the roadway safety issues. Uh, this is something that's near and dear to me because, of course, as a cyclist, you know, you don't really have any fender benders on a bicycle. Um, mishaps tend to have much more immediate and life altering and serious consequences. Um, if you've never been hit by a car, well, <sighs> As somebody who's been there, done that, and got the bloody t-shirt, I uh, hope you never have to, but uh, it does happen, and um, it's one of those things the way you, afterwards you're sitting there and you're saying to yourself, um, yeah, I wish I could rewind the clock, I wish I could, you know, undo uh, what occurred. A lot of times you can't, you know, whether it's a busted shoulder, a busted leg, a punctured lung, whatever. Um, I've been there and done that, like I said, got the t-shirt, um, I've had to direct traffic around friends who've been hit by cars while waiting for an ambulance on a Sunday morning, not the best way to start a week, to put it mildly, and, um, of course, myself, I've, you know, had that occur, and the thing that really bothers me is where did we go wrong? Where did we as a society say that this kind of negligence, this kind of rampant disregard for public safety, this kind of just flat out, you know, disrespectful, homicidal, antisocial, willy nilly behavior is, is appropriate? I understand a lot of people use their cell phones for social media for a variety of things I mean I have a dumb phone you can look at this it's got buttons on it right I don't have a smartphone I don't have one of those big slabs with a touch screen I, I specifically have avoided getting one I've never had one actually um, I've had the opportunity to get one I've chosen not to I'm perfectly happy with my dumb phone um, and, and I guess, like I understand for people who have a smartphone and they use it as a personal computer basically to go online all the time, check their Facebook, check their whatever, they're going to be using it for things that I would never think to use mine for because it's not suited to that. So presumably they're going to be more susceptible to those urges, they're going to be more likely to um, give way to those temptations, they're going to be more likely to essentially make mistakes and I understand I haven't put myself in that position because I don't have a phone that's suited to that sort of thing uh, in fact I, I generally speaking don't participate in social media at all I don't have Facebook I don't have Twitter I don't have any of that crap um, so you know in some ways uh, maybe you know when I look at the behavior of my fellow Americans and their rampant disregard for public safety and the lives and the safety of others, um, which they kind of, you know, take for granted as the way things are, as if they, they have no understanding of the fact that they could be horrendously injuring or even killing someone um, because of how they're conducting themselves. I, I, on one hand, I, I understand where they're coming from isn't where I'm coming from, right? Their, their priorities, I won't say have been altered, but they've allowed their priorities um, to sort of, you know, change them and change who they are and how they conduct themselves. But, but I guess uh, what I keep coming back to is why have we as a society tolerated this, right? If you saw a man walking into a public place with a gun and 
brandishing the gun around and, and threatening to shoot in random directions where other people might be who could be hit by the bullets. I don't know about you, but like if I saw something like that, I would be totally shocked by it. I would be horrified. I would, uh, my natural instinct would be, that is wrong. It must be stopped. If I saw a person with a mouth of cocktail, with a flaming fuse lit in a bottle of gasoline, getting ready to throw it at a at a crowd of people and incinerate random passers-by, I would say to myself, that is wrong. I, I, we should stop it. That, like, that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Um, and it, it just amazes me that um, these behaviors are countenanced with the car and with the cell phone. Whereas if instead of a car and a cell phone, it was some other form of weapon or material, it, it wouldn't be countenanced. There would be outrage, there would be uh, protests, there would be a demand that this be, be addressed. But, um, you know, we're, we object to mass shootings, we object to Molotov cocktails, we object to people who go on a rampage, but we, we turn a blind eye to people who, um, you know, using an everyday item like an automobile and a cell phone, uh, pose just as much risk as any of those. And it, it just, it just amazes me. It's just, um, it, it's unsettling. It, it doesn't sit well with me. And I don't understand how we got to this point as a society. Do, do we really have that little regard for the lives of our fellow Americans? Do we literally have that little regard for public safety? Do we, do we literally expect other people to go through their lives running for their lives from random motor vehicles steered by people who might as well be blind, deaf, and dumb because they've given themselves, you know, self-imposed ADD by, you know, attaching a blue teeth to the rear or, you know, locking in on Facebook while they're driving on a four-lane highway or through a crowded downtown or through the school zone where your daughter walks to school, right? I, I mean, think about this. I understand it's very tempting to say to yourself, I know, generally speaking, this particular thing is dangerous, but I can handle it, right? That's the, uh, the attitude of exceptionalism that we're all tempted with. And, uh, you know, you see this with, I mean, a classic example is substance abusers, right? Somebody who takes drugs or somebody who drinks too much. They're always like, well, I, I know this isn't, like, I shouldn't do this, but, hey, I can handle it, man, right? And what do they usually do? They crash into a post. They kill a family of four. They run a school bus off the road. They hit somebody riding their bike, or a little old lady crossing the street, or whatever. And at the end of the day, everybody sits there and scratches their noggin and says, oh my God, this is horrible. How could we have prevented such a thing? And nobody addresses the underlying philosophical issues, um, the underlying understanding of the priorities at work, the the judgment calls at work, the, the value systems at work. Um, and there are value systems and philosophies and judgment calls. We can, we can use the artifice of psychology to try and explain away various human behaviors, but at the end of the day, you're responsible for what you do. You're responsible for the good you do in life. You're responsible for the bad you do in life. And I do not understand why so many otherwise normal people feel that they can go through their lives posing a menace to public safety and road users everywhere. From me on my bike, to me in my car, to me as a pedestrian, to you. Whether you're walking or riding your bike or driving your car or doing whatever it is you do on a daily basis. Um, why is it that people feel they're entitled to try and kill you or to risk 
killing you out of negligence. What, what is it? Is that text to their BFF really worth your life? Is that, is checking that Facebook post really worth killing a family of four? Is, is they're being constantly engaged with their social media worth increasing the risk to everybody and their brother who uses the roads on a daily basis? Um, there's no good answer to these questions, right? Um, we, 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 can, we can look at the companies that are sort of responsible for promulgating this and say, well, they, yeah, they know what they're doing. They're, you know, they're marketing certain things and their, their marketing attempts are guided by appeals to, you know, basic, basic, and in fact, the basest of human emotions. And yeah, they know how they're manipulating people. You know, they, 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 they know they're getting people to want those likes and this and that. And, you know, they don't care if, if it kills you on your way to work tomorrow while you're out running errands or while you're going for a bike ride on a Sunday morning. Yeah. But at the same time, what about all the other people, right? Yeah, the, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, you know, they're responsible for what they do. But so are the people who buy their products and use their products and participate in the, the systems that they've created, right? It's kind of a cop-out to say, well, somebody else set this up. I'm just using it. No, you've decided to use it. You've decided to use it to the exclusion of common sense and public safety. You've decided to use it to the point where you've become the moral equivalent of the maniac who goes into a public room and randomly discharges a shotgun with their eyes closed, pointing at the four winds of the compass. You've become the public menace of our time. Not because you're evil, but because you don't care enough to make sure you stay good. You've, you literally can't be bothered to refrain from doing it, even if it costs somebody their life, even if it endangers somebody on a daily basis, even if it makes you uh, the biggest threat to public safety this side of, you know, organized terrorism or war, that sort of thing. The sad truth is we all use the roads on a daily basis, so we're all susceptible to this. And while our public officials close, you know, close their eyes to it, while our social media encourages it, while nobody talks about it, it still happens. Every freaking day you go out there on the road, one of these your bones endangers your life. One of these people thinks that their upload, their like, their checking their account is worth sending you to the grave, or at least to the ER. And I don't know about you, but that gets me really pissed off. That's not something that we should tolerate. The, the physical danger is one thing. But the damage to society caused by that kind of a lack of respect for your fellow human beings, that's even worse. And, you know, as a cyclist, as somebody who spends time on the road, uh, as somebody who's seen this, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, etc., I would humbly suggest that we should seriously consider this to be what it is. The public safety issue of our time. The thing that we need to address. What kind of world, ask yourself, what kind of world do you want to live in? Is it a world where somebody can recklessly risk your life, flat out kill you, and then walk away with a shrug and a slap on the wrist? Or is it a world where somebody who behaves in that sort of way is going to be treated as what they are, which is a menace to public safety and road users everywhere? I would suggest it should be the latter. The problem is that's not, I don't see that happening, right? Uh, many states have put in effect laws for regulating use of the cell phone, use of texting. At the end of the day, it hasn't worked. And it hasn't worked because there hasn't been a corresponding cultural change. Um, generally speaking, 
In this country, we like to think that the way to solve something is to pass a law. Uh, sadly, that's a fiction. Generally speaking, when you pass a law, I mean, people think that everything has changed. Well, the reality is nothing's changed. The only difference is there's some law in the books that's either going to be ignored or disregarded. People will only obey a new law if it's a law that they all agree in principle with. And there have to be a lot of people who agree in order for it to make a difference. Um, the cultural change has to come first. Now, that's not saying enforcement doesn't have its place. But we we really need to start redefining this behavior as unacceptable. So, as somebody who who cares about this sort of thing, who's, you know, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, got the scars, uh, been in the ER, etc. Here's my suggestion. Yes, lobby your governmental representatives, your congressmen, etc. for, you know, changes to the rules. But in the meantime, you as a citizen have a voice. Use it. Let people know this is not acceptable. On a daily basis, right? You see somebody on a cell phone? Beep at them in warning. If nothing else, maybe you'll warn somebody else who could be hit by them. You see somebody not using a turn signal? Again, beep at them. They should be signaling. If they're not, whether because they're on a cell phone or some other reason, it's a danger. You're warning them, right? Don't tolerate it. Don't countenance it. Don't disregard it. Don't shrug and walk away. Respond to it in a way that's in accordance with the danger it presents. And that danger is significant, right? I mean, there's a reason we got tens of thousands of people killed every year in car accidents. Um, and I honestly think that right there says a lot. Accidents. What, what does that mean? Is it really accidental if somebody's being negligent and breaking the law and doing something they know they shouldn't be doing? I don't think that's an accident. Right? Maybe we should just use the word collision instead of accidents. After all, um, it's not accidental that this sort of stuff goes on, does it? Um, it happens for a reason. And that reason, like I said, is the choices people make and the priorities they have and the philosophies they abide by and the, the way they've decided to live their lives. And there's a lot of people out there who, despite being otherwise law-abiding people, have decided to live their lives by the precept that they literally do not care if they get your Achilles. And it's high time that we decided that was unacceptable. One rider out.